Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment, and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done. We did, uh, I think, 24, and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't we? know about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. A weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done... Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's Looking back at the year, a year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq, we've seen uh, the advent of more fears over global warming, we've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections, we've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God. If you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub that was that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because you know, it's uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly? What the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the the grub. The grub. It was just I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. I uh, put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Oh, because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. And oh, so some ruffians stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. I put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea, and uh, I saw. Planned like, out. This is. <laughs> I bet, well, we read about this later in the diary. So and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through but with legs and um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things and they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> they were going, biscuits. biscuits over here! But I can't, that, what, <laughs> Come what, on, what, what was it, it Like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet- Not that far. They're, but, but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird that that happened. I never thought that would happen in 2006. <laughs> And that's what, that's, <laughs> you never thought that would happen in 2006. That's what's nice, He's isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see-through thing, you do. eating a biscuit. Uh, do that's that's where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of a a anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to. To learn more stuff about weird stuff that's but happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that uh, a creature which you can't even identify. That or you name. don't know, right? You, you, you don't know what it is. Right? Um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that. What is that? How is that useful? Just because everything is is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you, and it's not useful to us. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was, but Carl or where thinks, it happened, but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that that the grub has an inkling, has, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it. They, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being uh, yeah. uh, taking the stars and the flower. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's going to happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park. Because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything. They're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. 
Now, over time, you know, they, they're gonna cause more trouble than they what are now. What evidence have you got what that they're getting more violent? What, Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky, they come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub, having a biscuit, everything's trying different food out. You'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on, on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Mm. Time makes you more intelligent. Well. No, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If, if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to some- I can't even be bothered explaining it, but, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, everything- everything's moving on. <sighs> Yeah, but, but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man. It's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so God, God. He's still on a date. Get a life, man. Hello, PlayStation 3. Is yeah, he hello. 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 Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. <laughs> Get a life. High five, man. <laughs> I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in, you know. Get a stock in? No, get, getting some condoms. What, put over your head? <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, uh, I thought it was worth getting some condoms in, you know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season and, uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and I was weird, because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage. So it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the, the thing and I was trying to open it. So, because I thought that they, they would, it, you had to open it. Try know, it on. You, try well, it on. <laughs> exactly. Okay, they just, you know, in case it doesn't fit. <laughs> exactly. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back, yeah. And, uh, and do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do, yes. Five pounds. <laughs> and, um, so I'm trying to open this thing and, and this guy who works there, sort of really this middle-aged guy who works there, goes, you, you, know, you have to, um, you have to take that to the, uh, checkout, so you can't open that yourself. And I was just, cause I, I don't know, I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of, you know, prophylactics and things, the novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And, uh, so I just left it, I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take these to the counter. Cause you never, it's like if you get served by a, by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. You're going to fill them up with water and throw them at students. <laughs> and um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a uh, two pack? A two pack of yeah. What was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously. That'd be that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> One for the kids. Take them down, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl. The famous uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They they were the early days. Um, Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with them for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so do. sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was that was a hell of a. She went. Oh, I remember when I remember when you used to buy me stuff like condoms. It's gone downhill since then. Well, no, she didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is, there's less. Of course, prizes. she didn't. That's what that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, isn't it, over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if, if you're- if you always get something good, 
It's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little baby <laughs> Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get, I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, because what, what, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff, is the expectations. I prefer it, if I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop, she comes back from work and go, you want to go out? But you Rather don't do than, that. No, I do now and again. But it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da, it, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how, you, you know how, like, people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time, and they go, oh, I'm gonna do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote! <laughs> That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with, uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like that's I've amazing. Said, like I've said but you a lot. can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask. Are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th for Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about you know in the last podcast stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something now. It isn't. No, they do, I don't know what that means. No, no, they don't exist, you just well, make they, up things they, say, they say. They say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy such time. a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a, it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again, no, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents, you're hiring yeah. a car, you're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away, you're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work, yeah. and we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But no, what I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an upheaval. Easter's alright. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas again, that that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like um, on. holidays, when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises you, someone with a holiday how can unless you, you win it on a game show? How can you really go? Bloody hell! I'm on holiday. Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked my time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, and nice. I went along with it, and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No. She won't like it as much, and I won't pick the right place, and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, well, up. it was a me uh, yeah, But to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment, because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about himself <laughs> like a crab! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just he's 33 now and his knees are around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But, hold on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at 33. Well, it's, it's definitely something, it's just not very good. Subsidence? I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not- <laughs> This isn't as good as it used to be. <laughs> this washing up. Oh, he says he's got nothing in the flat. That's why he has to do a shop every day because he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're going to want to eat. But that's why you get a. But d you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe 
a, a dozen meals, don't you? So you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I gonna have chicken? Or am I gonna have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. No, but I always come down to one of a uh, half a dozen meals. You've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've There's got too much time There's nothing wrong with nipping to the supermarket. There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you it had one thing, you had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't be bothered. All, couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Carl in an interview with him, I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV, um, a while back on the thing called The Culture Show. Oh, yeah. Too. And I'll tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair being interviewed, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking round? Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally yeah. looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm doing that. And really. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I met a guy, funny you mention that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him and we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? <laughs> you know, uh, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh who speaks God. sense. Oh, God. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just and the they way sort they... of greased it up a bit just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? And I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, like must she gave you about a book 50 to people. No, no, she, she started colouring my head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder, she's doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> Sure, she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched like other people who were on. Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You just have to go round to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going. No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get the in glare. people's not, eyes. They got to be careful. Health and safety. The light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing that again. How do you cope with this newfound um, interest in in you? as a person. I've got an idea, Steve, by the way. You know, but my, the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Sure. When they see him in the yeah, street yeah, with his yeah, little yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah. Right? I'm going to do a tour, um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play, or uh, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh -huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. With. Or what yeah, or yeah. whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to have you seen this bald-headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send uh, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures, uh, on sh if you own a shop, but a big picture of him. If you just, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald-headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. He's only going to rain it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> that, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I, I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Hmm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you mean? All the, yeah, I mean, I, 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 since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. 
Just the way- I, I don't understand why I'd Is it because his... you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I... so lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects How eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds? He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? <laughs> but there's why one Velcro we... manufacturer going, yes! At, at last. last! He said what needed to be said. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing you carried a pot on your head? For- for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that? Well, no, I've- I've- I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the- the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you gotta wear a tie. Yeah, but th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never <laughs> wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro <laughs> shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, or because, take a bag. because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back- I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right? They wore a tie. They wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know- Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with- with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So- so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie- its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, it right. was called a tie. It tied together. Okay. Yeah. So then, when we uh, we had buttons, that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of of smartness, like saying I've made an effort. Yeah. Okay. But now that would go away. So now you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his with his apples and oranges and his his keys and his sticks. He's making a nest out of. So it would- it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round- I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh no, oh no, but look- look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro! <laughs> it's a hat! Yeah, well that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? <laughs> no, but what I, what I mean is if- if someone- Stick if the you... video on of, uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. <laughs> yeah, but- but then it's still news. If you- news is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you that's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But- but news is information. No, and the what... key- the key with news is the word new. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's- it's it just- it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before because you couldn't have because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news though because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday. And you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead. And you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now, because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, 
time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But yeah. But according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you uh, uh there was an earthquake, when was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, you got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense. No, but the world but is- you're not- you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it- it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't uh, like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful might to be know it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but- but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I- I don't know if I like it. It's- it's- sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a- a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- Like I said- Hiya! Well, could you just move out of the way for us? It can be us? anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that chicken noise- Oh, that's not gonna freak noise, people out. No, but it sort of make you smile, but you'd- you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. What, you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you? And you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something <laughs> clucking in my way. Do 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, that's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically, it's like, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, his mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just pop that <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose man was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it'll probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <laughs> worry, worry hole with worries and that's it. Worry hole. Everyone's got to <laughs> fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume worry. that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. I, with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Susanna and I decided to sleep tops and tails because it made me get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roald Dahl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is, but he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nut. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He saw the mattress and all. So we decided to sleep tops and tails. It just gets strange. so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. 
Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go, there you go. Well, that seems cheap. There's no engine in it. So we bought this, we bought this, like, you know, uh, flat and what have you. And we bought the bed. And then, uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. No, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was, like, travelling round. He'd just keep in the- in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke was, who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So Don't Uncle Alf, so Uncle Alf, right, it, well tell me about Uncle Alf. Well you know about him, he's the one who slept in a dinghy. <laughs> the one who- Cos his mattress was in his car! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, why didn't he go, oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy, I'm not gonna go out and get the- not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, <laughs> me, me dad got me- got me his mattress and, uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> And Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this. And I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Mm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> 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 the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> The mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road, yeah. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. This <laughs> is like, not a real place. It's like fucking Narnia. It's, it's a children's TV program. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden ticket. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> oh, little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not the bees. playing with them, is he? Well, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but I, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. You know <laughs> what I mean? They don't get on. And it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey. And it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What? For honey. Yeah, no, but like I say, you can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so, get ten bees, Yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> but you- you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it that's doesn't it. You can't eat it and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. <laughs> ten bees! Imagine keeping ten bees! Well, just get them to do- do the graft. If you've got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they'll go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No. If you've got ten bees, you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! They don't, no! It's not a workhouse. <laughs> bees don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've oh, got a bad back. Anyway, back to, uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not- I, I can't see how that's gonna ever evolve. No, well they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell, well. I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, look at the state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest worry. So, so as we evolve and we change, 
Uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still going, oh, I wish, we'd, I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at, um, look how things do change. But why are we all going to get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um... The air? Or yeah, the hair? Just, you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing. And we're not going to look that healthy. And, uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, "Look at this state of that." What's and that's got to do been... with the with human evolution. But, but the stuff because in the sea been is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark? So they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> if they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper or something. It's to, it was just a head. But Carl, the a fish reason that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. <laughs> Watched a program about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat. just someone I've been sort of working with. Do you want a mate of yours? He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're going to have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're going to have something new, make it make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Because it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've, uh, we've, we've come there, Rick, to, to where we entered. It was this sense. time last year when we first started the podcast that, um... We were talking about, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, which is the, the, the last series, uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I, to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um... If I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, m really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not going to survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this um, island I can eat, give me the, the cat crocodile's penis. It wouldn't bother me. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that programme, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's alright. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it. The texture's probably the same as lots of other things. What use. would hunger do to you, though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, uh, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms? I think that? you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up. But when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? Well, yeah, that's I a good point. I say he's been eating that. <laughs> How come I have got this? <laughs> you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. You raised your version and with us, Carl Dilkington. Can't. <laughs> This is the worst chair I've ever sat on. <laughs> and I've sat on some fucking chairs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Alright, are we starting? One, one. Are we ready? Are we recording? Yeah. Ready?
Right. Hello and welcome to a brand new series. Oh. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I was getting it. I was getting it all He's fired getting up. Excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. Just seems a bit loud. That. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. Look at that. Look at this, Carl. This is a shambles, this mate. This is a. People have paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? Yeah. Well, come back here then. We're doing a podcast, you dopey bald twat. What really? are you doing? Right, go on. We'll just have to deal like, with it. What that, are you up to? Fucking Davros. Hello? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right, okay, ready? So it was your problem. Oh, Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right, ready? Yeah. Hello, welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St well, no. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I was so excited to say hello. Okay, right, okay. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is Carl Pilkington. All right. The boys are back in town. What concerns me, is this the tail end of the last series of podcasts or is this a brand new comeback? What I mean is, is this take that when Robbie Williams had left, they sort of limped on with a couple more songs and then called it an end? Or is this the triumphant return of take that? This is, I mean, no, I, I think we're sort of, we're like a, a, a great rock group who's just been away for a couple of years doing their, their fifth album. Right. Is it the fifth? The mediocre well, fifth album. The mid <laughs> yeah. We've done, hold on, one, two, three series. We did the specials, which is like a fourth series. Yeah, this is like the, this is like the fifth series. Here it is, the fifth series of podcasts. Although we can't call it podcasts because, um, they're audio books because we're charging for them. We're not even going to give them away free first, then charge for them because, um, in the past we've given away free. Oh, and then we put them on iTunes, the back catalogue. You can, you can buy them. If you missed out on the last year when they were free for a year, now you can pay a pound. People are c complaining. Last time we gave it away for free, like a year later, we sort of put it up there. People can buy it. They're going, oh, this was once free. Well, yeah, it was once free. So we did our bit. We gave it to you for free and now we're charging for everybody to get, you should have bought it for free. I can, we can't do anymore. If everyone did that, I mean, it would just be a better world, wouldn't it? Give it away for free, maybe, and then charge for it if you're too late. So we're not even going to give this one away for free because they they annoyed us, didn't they, Carl? Yeah, a little bit. Um, well, uh, we actually did a bit of planning for this as well. We thought we're going straight to a paid audio book. Let's plan it. Let's not just come in here and shambles. We've booked a studio. We're in a nice little studio in West London. Our own little. It's all to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, we just look at right the right. chairs. Look at the chairs. Yeah, Steve didn't get a good chair, but yeah, well, yeah, I got a rubbish chair. Look how big I am. I'm a giant sat on a like a kiddie's chair, <laughs> and you've got look at you. You're almost half asleep, as usual. Carl, you, I don't know why you need a good chair. What do you mean? I don't, why do you need a good comfy chair? Look how you're sat. This, this is you can be perched on a stool. You can be perched on a box. Is, why don't we swap you... chairs? Well, why do you want to, what's wrong with you? Because it's, look at it! Is this how you normally behave? You always get your own way at home? Is this how it is? Yes, oh. in my house I do normally sit in a chair that I find comfy. Will you be happy if I swap chairs? Yes, I'm I had to get him a special chair. I bought some chairs for the office. I bought them. He went, oh, don't like this one. So I went and got him another one. It was actually cheaper than the one he had. He said, yeah, I like that more. Well, there you are. That's a lovely happy ending. You ended up saving I didn't money. give him a happy ending. I did not give him a happy ending. He just sat there and we worked. There was no happy did ending Did you get this, will you be happy? I think I would be happy. What do you mean, certainly. think? It's like Goldilocks. Are you going to be happy with this or not? <laughs> well, why don't you let me try it on for size and see how we how we get on? This is. I feel guilty charging for this. <laughs> well, let's just, just try it. How's that, sir? Is that okay? That's a nice chair, actually. Well, you're going to move the chair, so you're going to sit. Oh, no, that's the whole dynamic. No, I'm going to move the chair. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you got me. I can't. You can't. It's got to be me and Steve one side and the little round twonk the other. Okay. <laughs> Right, okay, we're gonna start any minute now. We had a little cup of coffee. There's some Kit Kat in the fridge, isn't there? Right. We thought we'd feed Carl a little Kit Kat later. Cause he's like, he's there, he's sort of pressing the buttons, he's keeping an eye on the computer and everything. And it's like a doctor. He, a doctor doesn't swab his own forehead, so what I'll do is I'll get a little Kit Kat later, I'll dunk it in Carl's, um, tea, and then I'll feed him a little Kit Kat. Look forward to that. Yeah. Mm. How fussy was Carl as well with the tea? He talks oh. about you with the chairs. He was looking at what tea bags they were. I went, oh, PG tips. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a bit right. strong, PG. I can't believe you've got favourite tea bag. What's your favourite tea bag? Twinings, English breakfast. Can you really tell the difference? Yeah, I can. I've done like a little test on it because my mate was saying, oh, it's rubbish, it's all in your head. Mm. And he had a selection of tea bags. <laughs> uh, we had nothing else going on. He said, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make three teas. 
and he used Tetley PG twinings. Was... Straight away, I got the twinings. Straight away. Party oh, time. Yeah. Party time in the Pilgerton household. Ooh, man, I like oh, it. when was this? How old were you? Oh, just going back a, a few months. I was like, uh, I was like a Jilly Goulden, just sort of uh, having a little. Th you can tell by the smell of a PG because it's strong tea. That mm. very strong. Uh, twinings is quite uh, fresh and light. <laughs> Uh, Tetley was just the one in the middle. Can they get their money back? If they have paid for this, can they get their money back and I just love the money back. illegally download it with the this people that- This isn't for the thing, is it? We're just having a chat. Oh, we can tell, like, like the tea bags, we can tell the quality podcasting from the rubbish, can we? We'll set this out. If this is still in, then it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, uh, let's start now. Let's, let's start. <laughs> right, right. Concentrate. Um, so, episode one, I thought what we'd do, um, is- maybe go over some of the things that have happened since we met, as it's the final series. We met in about 2002. I thought we could think of how the world's changed in those, uh, seven years. Six, yeah. seven years. Well, certainly, uh, the big news is the endless threat of terror. Terror, the war on terror. That had, that had kicked in when we met Carl all those years ago. When I walked into that room, we were given this little... What, what, what I, at first I thought was a little slack-jawed chimp, gimp, sort of techno kid. It turned out that he wasn't very technical either. Didn't even have that. No, didn't even have that, just a gimp. And he opened his mouth and we thought, we've struck gold here. This is like a, a vein of uh, pure idiocy. Um, so that was going on. Uh, podcasting hadn't been invented. That's new, isn't it? You were very much a pioneer, if you don't mind me saying, Rick. Thanks, mate. The iPod, we've talked about the iPod, um, Carl not impressed, I think it's a, just an amazing piece of design. No, it is, it's good. Yeah. I've always said it's, it's, it's good, now I've got one. I was listening to it on the way here. Yeah. But all I'm saying is... How many songs have you got on it? Because you said there's only about three songs you'd want to hear. Well, what I've, uh, I've probably got about, we got about 400 on it now. That's right. Um, but there's no, there's no sort of filler. I don't just go putting full albums on it. No. I handpick. Yeah. Um, but what's odd is I find that I'm sort of buying stuff that I wouldn't normally buy if it was only on record, which is good but bad, because I've, yeah. I've got a lot of clutter now. You know what I mean? Well, you said you haven't. You said you haven't got a filler. So I thought you were cherry picking. No, but what I'm saying is, like, yesterday I bought some Dr. Ook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When was the last time anyone thought, I'll tell you what, I haven't heard for a while, Dr. Ook. <laughs> well, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, I used to like that one. My mum used to have that one when she was doing a Sunday dinner. I thought, I like What that. one? What did she used to have on? Dr. Ook. What, every, every Sunday? Well, it's just, uh, that's the memory I've got of it. I'm cooking the turkey, put the Dr. Ook on. It just, it just always on. Uh, and some other country western singer. My mum was Jim Reeves. She always put Jim yeah, Reeves on. Yeah, she liked on. Jim Reeves. Yeah, I like Jim Reeves. Um, my parents didn't like music. Just silence. Oh no! <laughs> my house. It was constantly. <laughs> never put record on. Oh wow! Never Su on. Our house. Susan. It does her head in when she comes around to mum and dad's house because there's music on in every room, all different. <laughs> and my mum's got into this fella called uh, Roger Fender or something, some country western singer, and it's on all the time on loop. The same song. You said the sheep across the road has started to sort of hum to it. It's on that much. Brilliant. Think of looking over and seeing some sheep humming. No, he's Roger just, Fender, whoever he is. I don't. I, I think that's his name. But uh, but yeah. So I've bought some Doctor Ook. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying. What is, did you buy? What Doctor Ook did you buy? It's called. Uh, if not you, it's called. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't have bought that if if I had to go to a record shop and. Well, no, it, it wouldn't be available. <laughs> They'd go. What are you talking about, mate? Have you got that one by? Mate, can you leave the store? Well, yeah, but that's a good thing, isn't it, now that you're being opened up to a whole different... Yeah, uh, but it's that thing of, of just buying... That's what excites me most, exactly. the back catalogue yeah. that you can, yeah, without yeah. trying it's, to go into it. But, but I'm just saying that that's what happens, isn't it? If you've got a space for something, you fill it. And that's the problem. If my, if my iPod wasn't an iPod and it was a cassette, Dr. Rook wouldn't be on it. He wouldn't feature. He wouldn't be on the cassette. Elvis what? would be. Yeah. Uh, just the big boys. What's wrong with having a space and filling it? I mean, there's a space between your ears. We'd love to fill that, but um, just because it's stuff is normally stuff you don't need if you've got too much space and you're filling it. It's like Ricky's house. You've got stuff in there now that you want to add in a smaller flat. You've got dead owls and stuff like that. Right, dead owls. Why are you buying dead owls? No, it's an antique thing. It's an antique stuffed owl, and I was assured it died 
of natural causes of old age, yeah, and then sure. this yeah, it looks in good nick. It didn't look yeah. u- upset. But dead owls suggest that they just fly into the room and I just leave them there. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that they cr- they crack their head. But on, what, you're on just the sat in your uh, dressing gown constantly drinking yeah. gin. Uh, Jay, there's another dead owl. <laughs> Clean up. Feed it to the cat. Feed it to the puma. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. I haven't got room for a. I haven't got room for a live owl. Never mind a dead one. <laughs> so that's the difference, and that's the same with an iPod, isn't it? With an iPod, because you've got so many gig, you go, "What will I have?" Well, yeah, but Ricky's not. S- Ricky's not sat at home looking at an empty space in his flat, thinking, "I need to fill that with something." I think he would be. What would be there if that dead owl wasn't there? What would you put there? But you've picked on one thing. You've picked on one. Well, that's all you small... can do. I'm just picking on an example. What else do you want me to pick? I'm just saying, I have not got room for a dead owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd never look at one in a shop. I'd go, I can't, I'm not gonna buy that because I haven't got the space for it. But why are you obsessed with, like, someone trying to pressure you into getting this dead owl? I, I mean, it, it seems a weird thing to shout, I have not got space for a dead owl. No, but if I, say if I had an urge to see a dead owl. Right. Natural History Museum. Loads of them. Right. I've never seen one and gone, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to the museum, I want one in my house. That to me is like, right, Suzanne, have we got everything? Have we got a dishwasher? Yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Ironing board? Yeah. Right. There's a bit of space there. Is there anything you want? Then, if it's like, dead owl? Alright, we've got the room for it. But the way we're, the way we're living now, we've definitely not got room for, for a dead owl. That's all, that's all I was saying. And to me, a dead owl, I'd like this to be part of, um, estate agents' patter. <laughs> and there's a lovely space there for, uh, they can fit in about seven dead owls. They don't, they don't do it by square footage anymore. It's, uh, six thousand dead owls. Um, you idiot. Well, um, yeah, I'm still not convinced by this idea of, uh, this space has got to be filled. You know, people are, it's not, people just choose to buy things and fill up their house with those things because they, they give them pleasure. This Most things I- we've got are junk. If, if you didn't have junk, all you'd have is a, a, a cooker, um, a, a bath, um, maybe a sink, a bed, and that would be it. That anything else, a, a television, isn't necessary, is it? You seem to think that people should live like, you know, kind of 19th century mining community. Well, no, but these, <laughs> like, a few years ago, people worked this out, didn't they? They all went minimalistic. Because they Say said- Say what? Say what? Minimalistic. So one more time. Minimalistic. No. No. What, the, what's, what letter are you starting with in that word? M. Okay. Where are you going on from there? Mi- minimum. Well, it must be mi- it must be minimum. Yeah. So, so it's what that minimalistic. 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 No, 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 no. You're well, pop- you know what I mean. No, no, wait. You're popping in an M where there should be an N. Minimalistic. You put in two M's when there should be one M, right? Minimalistic. Mi- minimalistic. Yes. Wow. Well, right. well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> That's so. the end of the uh, the first episode. <laughs> it's gone well. Um, so anyway, a couple of years back, everyone went. Yeah, that was that was the that was the trend, wasn't it? But we've gone back to being clutter clutteristic. The way I live, like I've said to you before, it's the old three month rule. If something's not used over three months, chuck it out because it's not needed. So suitcases. What was the that? Yeah, suitcase. No, he uses a suitcase every two weeks. He's yeah, off all the time. Yeah, he's yeah. Off the line, yeah. Uh, most stuff, most stuff at clothes. I'll well, go. if you don't wear a piece of clothing in three months, it's gone. Well, why haven't I wore it in three months? Well, because maybe it's a, uh, it's a suit or a tuxedo and you've not no, made any fancy have, balls. I don't have any clothes like that. I wear the same things anyway. I throw clothes away every three months because I get too fat for them. <laughs> so, you know. But it does seem to me the way you talk, it's like you want to live, as I say, like some kind of 19th century pauper with a big tin bath in the lounge in the one room in your house and all the family bathe in it. And yet you wouldn't be happy with well, that, Well, maybe, would you? maybe. Well, I've told you before about that's, that's something I said when I was younger. What? what did you say? When I was younger, um, I think uh, I was having a bath or something, and I said to my mum, oh, remember when I was in, like, that tin bath in front of the fire? <laughs> she went, what? And uh-huh. now that's strange, isn't it, that you're saying I'd be happier with that back then? So it's like that was my past life. Well, hang on, hang on. Whoa, we haven't finished whoa, yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. What your, do you mean? Your mum, your mum said what you're talking about. You said how old were you? I uh, must have been a kid if I'm having a bath and my mum sat there. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how you operate. I assume you were, but how old? Must have had time to have a bath. As you get older, you don't have as much time, do you? So I'd say five. 
I love the fact that after five he didn't have time for a bath. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's so busy. Carl, we read your diary. One day it was simply went to the cobblers and back. No, but so you had time to have about nineteen baths. No, but as you get older, you sort of go. I haven't got time to sit in a bath. Whereas a kid, it's something to do. You're really staring at ants. When have you ever been too busy to have a bath? One, you're never busy. Two, how can you be too busy to wash? It's like saying too busy to eat. Breathe. Got to breathe last night. Why? I had a bit of work to do. What point are you making? So I'm just saying. This you is not an anecdote. You said that that I'd be happier back in 1800s or whatever. But what are you yeah. so, what are you saying that you didn't really have a bath in front of the fire? You yeah, mean this I... was a glimpse of a past life? Is yes. What you think? Yes. This is this is just such a non-point. <laughs> this is just nothing. This is this, if you'd said, well, then I went off to see one of those people who regresses you, and although it was a load of old bollocks, he regressed me, and it turns out I was the king of Sheba. I love those things, people. Everyone thinks they've lived before, right? Mm. Did I tell you that um, there was a, a documentary um, about these people in um, uh, Los Angeles that, that they'd lived before and they'd come back and and uh, they did they did a, a come as you were party, so they went as the people in their previous life. All of them famous. Of course they were. Kings, queens, uh, leaders of men. Not as I was a stable hand, I forget my name. Right, Edward, two Napoleons, one of them's lying. <laughs> I mean, it, absolute twaddle. <laughs> we we're talking about things that have, uh, happened since we met. We've, uh, we've done podcasting, we've done the iPod, we've dismissed that. Um, See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, c cat mops, I don't know, it wasn't yours, nor was the tie, was it? The stupid tie. What's that? What's the one about the tie? Um, The tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that, that's something I, I saw somewhere, but it never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet, it's such a good... It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie <laughs> packed with stuff. You want right, to... Imagine All right, Frank, stuff. nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um... <laughs> it's ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck? What for? Um, I don't know. What, well, I'll tell you. What? Um, uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well, all right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, huh, that's weird. What are you so doing? I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, innit? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing on. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice it, give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> a tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something, hands free, and everything's always there. A bag, you put stuff in a bag. You put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags. That's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off. Oh, where's the bag? A tie. When you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. Go. <laughs> oh! The country would look smarter. Right, you have a pocket, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a, like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got spare change, I've got, uh, like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. A uh, pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's whatever. safe, isn't it? Oh, that's a, a good place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and then near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when you when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, <laughs> pop a tie on, go to the shop, you pop a tie on. Well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times. But I'm just saying, if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, you've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If I mean, come on, just don't, don't go way. mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else has happened since we met? 2002. Um, gay marriages. That's, uh, that's kicked in. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, they've happened. Are yeah. they popular though? I mean... Well, amongst gay people who want to get married, they're very popular, I imagine. What's the point of it? You know, I suppose they want to feel that there's an equality. 
But is it just one of them things where they wanted it because they can't have it? Do you uh, know what I mean? I think any excuse for a fancy dress. They like they like to dress up. They love a press tent. See, I just don't understand. That. What's it? I mean, who gets whose name do they use? Whose surname do they go with? I don't know. There's a problem. Just creating problems. I always say that. Any problem solved is a new problem made. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, any that. problem solved is a new problem made. Yeah. Like I said that time when I was in hospital and, uh, you know, I remember in the 80s everyone was going, oh, there's not enough hospital beds and all that. When I was in hospital with, uh, what's it, kidney stones. Yeah. Um, loads of beds, not enough pillars. So that's the way it works. It sorted out the bed problem. <coughs> they give me a bed at night. I was going, I haven't got a pillar. You had to go off and get one. They brought it back. It was still warm. Oh. <laughs> that had been between it. Under a bed head. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like you, you get all the beds, new problem. Where's the pillars? <laughs> Don't solve problems. Don't, Don't solve, solve problems. problems. Brilliant. What do you make of the um, this big problem in the church, not wanting uh, gay people to be priests? Does that concern you? No. No. <laughs> it's a problem if you're gay, and it's a problem if you go to church and you don't like gays. But I, I don't go to church, and I'm not gay. There's certain problems that just go over your head. If you were gay, Carl, what would you do? Well, I'd do what all gays do, I suppose. What the, what, what's that? Whatever it is they do. I'm just saying... Well, that, well you're going to just say... What if well, you I'm didn't... not gay, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, getting a uh, gay marriage, um, would you uh, ever go through with that? What if I was gay? Well... It's hard to answer, isn't it? How can I answer it if I'm not gay? I don't know what I'd do. Well, no, I might no, not okay. look like this. I'd look totally different if I was gay. Why? Even though it's me mum's what's it, me dad's jeers or whatever, he's still I'd still I'd look different <laughs> because gays do. You make more of an effort. Look at me. I won't survive as a gay man. Maybe that's why I'm not one. <laughs> right, why? Carl. I'm going to give you a scenario though. Okay, I'm going to do on a test. Um, would you rather? So you're not gay. Okay, this is the real you, right? Um, uh, someone put a gun to your head and go, right, okay, Carl, you've either got a merry little gay fella, there's a little fella here, he, he loves you, he's liked you for a long time, he goes, hello, Carl, you go, all right, mate, he's a lovely bloke, um, I think he's, he lives in Brighton, I think he's in advertising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got a surprised. sports car, he's, he's smart, he looks lovely, um, pink shirt, white suit, he's great, he's very popular, got tints, it always looks good, mm. right, Lo lovely tan, um, he's about 38. What's his name? Uh, his name is Graham. Oh. Yeah. What's it better uh, than Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And he goes, hello, Carl. And you go, all right, Graham. And, uh, and someone suddenly bursts in and goes, right, you've either got to marry Graham. He puts a gun to your head. He goes, right, you've either got to marry Graham, okay? You've got to tell all your family. Well, you... I'm not, I'm not going to marry him, am I? What? Well, whoa, 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 get all the choices. Well, I know, I know one of the choices, and I'm not happy with that choice, so you go with whatever else. Well, no. So what's the other option, Rick? Well, okay. So you marry, you marry Graham and you yeah, do- I marrying Graham. You do all the things in the bedroom. Why is that happening? Well, you're married now. You're married now and he you wants to consummate the marriage. He loves Even you. under marriage you can't do that, can you? You can say, hang on a minute. Well, no. Well, I, don't, I don't know why you've married Graham. No, but you, you want him to be happy. Him. You want him to be happy. He's giving you a lovely house. Yeah, but I'd say, Graham, hang on a minute. You know the score. I'm not into this. No, I went he doesn't know. Because you didn't want a bullet in your head. No. <laughs> now, if you love me, will you stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? What you doing in the bedroom. Well, no, just, uh, you know, you have a lovely life, you do your own thing, you do this, right? Podcasts, do your little books and that, little, um, you know. Uh, and uh, Graham goes off, he does his, and he, he comes back, he goes, oh, I've had a day. Goes, What's the matter, Graham? And you go, you just sort of massage him, he's just like, you go, yeah, oh. I'll go with the other option. Well, wait, Carl! So you're going, oh, God, oh, you said I've made you some pork chop. He goes, oh, you're a darling, right? It wouldn't work, though, because you're putting two people together who don't want to be together. Well, Graham wants to be with you. Yeah, Graham yeah, loves you. Relationship's two-way, isn't it? And I, yeah. I, and I don't, I mean, this is a made-up man, and I know I don't like him. <laughs> That's just homophobic. No, it's not. He's annoying me. Why? He's annoying, yeah, why he's saying, is he annoying well, you? Just the way he looks after his body. Yeah. He's not saying he's tanning it, he's having yeah. a massage, and I wouldn't be doing all that, so it wouldn't last, the relationship yeah, wouldn't work. Yeah, he's but talking he's to you, he's well. No, it doesn't work. Opposites attract, okay? Not to and that point, it doesn't. He's good to you, right? He's really, he, he, he's, oh God, he's, he's faithful. Um, he's got a good job. He's got a really good job. Um, you get invited to really nice parties. It's just him. I don't like him. 
Well, no, he's he's no, that's a shame. He, he absolutely loves you. That's, that happens, doesn't it? It happens that I remember right. being at school with a girl who really liked me, and I was yeah. like, "It's not going to happen, Sharon." No, no, no. It didn't the, happen. the first, the first, the first, and that's day. Sharon, not Graham. <laughs> so the chances of me letting this Graham move in. <laughs> well, you've moved in with him, right? He's got a lovely, bigger, got a uh, six-bedroom house. Of course he is. And, um, you, you move in with him, right? So, first day you go, oh, I'm not happy with this, because you're thinking, oh, my God, it's a, oh, God. First day in marriage, where's it gonna go? He goes off, he g gives you a peck on the What's head. the option? Well, what's wait! What's the other choice? Well, you don't know! Yeah, okay. So, he comes home, he goes, oh, he's bought you a lovely little ankle bracelet. Oh, that's with, sweet of With right. Carl. Carl, love. Graham, I need a word. <laughs> I go, what is it? What's up, what's up love? <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Go, I'll be, look, I'll be Graham. Right, okay. I'll be Graham. What's the matter? You look tense. This is all, uh, it's, we're living a lie, eh? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just the alternative is so much worse. What's the alternative? Uh, well, what is the alternative, Rick? I think we're all waiting for that. Well, marry a chimp. <laughs> Marry a chimp. Yeah. Unless you either live with a chimp in a tree or marry Graham, your family are going to get killed. They're going to, someone's going to shoot him, right? So you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to go and live in a tree with a chimp and eat nothing but bananas and just live the chimp world? Okay. Yeah. Or woo Graham. You go down there, you're chatting to him, you're, in a, you're just in a, a club, right? You're there. But right. who's watching that I'm staying with Whoever this evil person is. The person is right, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, like, well, where's he watching from? The, the evil, the evil person's going, right, he goes to that club, Saturday nights, don't, don't bother going before midnight, he won't be there. Right, so you get there, you walk in there, it's 1am, and he goes, that's him over there, in the pink shirt dancing, okay? In right, a cage. He, would, he wouldn't like me. <laughs> he would. You go, no, you go, well, this uh, is it, you've got to win him over. Look at you, look at your lovely shaved head, hairy arms. Oh my god. I mean, you are more suited to the chimp, but now you'll go down a storm, right? You go down there, you've, you've got you've got a little vest on, leather trousers. What would you say to Graham? You've got back. to go over it. You've no. cut out, you've got a bought another pair of trousers and you've cut out the back, okay? There you go in. Your ass is showing, you've got, you've got a freshly shaved head, you've got a little white vest, okay? Mm. Has he got all this on? Uh, no, he's got, uh, he's got like a little pink Ben Sherman, uh, white trousers and, uh, espadrilles. Right, I dance over. Yeah. And yeah. say, uh, are you Graham? We go, yeah. Oh, hello. Who are you? So never mind, you haven't seen a chimp about, have you? <laughs> <laughs> hello, welcome to episode two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Huh? Oh, yeah, I just, I just, I just feel bad about Graham. I feel sorry for don't, Graham. Don't feel sorry for well, Graham. Well, he was a nice guy and he's, he absolutely- was so badly treated. Took you into his home, he was gonna give you everything, and you just didn't appreciate, and was saving your family's life. And you just- Yeah, I but just... I went, I went for the other option. There's no point, I, all I'd be doing is letting Graham down. And as much as I didn't like him, I don't want to ruin his life. I don't know why you didn't like him. He was just not my type. He was a lovely you know, guy. He wasn't a lovely guy. He didn't give Why wasn't he a lovely time. guy? Just his, just his ways, you know. I mean, you, you, you bond with some people, you don't with others. It had nothing to do with him. You barely even had a conversation gay. with him. Yeah, but you click straight away with people, don't you? You know, when you meet someone, you go, yeah, they're all right. I'd, it wasn't going to work. If I was to go out with a gay man, Graham wouldn't be the one. Who would be? Who would be? Just someone who wasn't as in your face as him. Well, which just someone? What do you mean in your face? What? Just sort of, you know, just the way he was straight away. I wouldn't go to a club to meet someone like that. I wouldn't, because I don't like doing that as a straight man. So just because I'm gay, I don't suddenly get into house. Well, if you if you were going to be gay, would you? What gay man would you want to marry? Probably someone who you don't know is gay. Is that what that means? Someone who's just quiet about it, just get on with it. So if you were gay, you'd like a sort of straight man. No, because that's not going to work either, is it? That was my situation with Graham. But how do you, how do you know, if, how, how would you, if you were gay, why would you approach someone who didn't know was gay? What, so if you're gay, the only gay life you can do is by going to a club where it's a racket at four in the morning and meeting no, someone? No, no. Right, so that's what but I'm who, saying. I'm saying, who would be your ideal partner if you were gay? Who would you like? 
There'll be someone who I don't know who's gay, innit? I don't know what that means. What do you mean it was someone who you don't know Because gay? I wouldn't go out with someone who's really like, oh, hello, and all that, with the shirt open, the Why tan. not? Because, <laughs> because that's the equivalent of going out with a woman who's got knickers up her ass, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the equivalent. It's the in-your-face woman and the in-your-face man. I don't want any of you. <laughs> Well, who do you want? Well, who was your sort of not. guy? Okay, we'll just say what your sort of guy is then. Do you want him to be sort of like a man's man, sort of goes, you know, slap? He's sort of like, he, when you go do something, you go, you, you dopey idiot, and he just sort of gives you. No, like, I don't want that. No, you want someone to go, oh, what's the matter with you? Do you want no, yourself better? Well, what do you want? What do you mean that? I'm oh, asking you what you want. Oh, petal. I don't yeah, want what do you want in a man? I'm asking you what the you want. The ones who are just normal, who just could talk, they'll go, all right, Carl, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Right. Well, okay. What are we doing tonight? Watching Die Hard, if you want. <laughs> Go straight to bed after that. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, he's straight in bed. Doesn't... I love the fact he went from like not being sure to no. just like getting a, a man. But not great. It wouldn't be four in the morning. No. I'd be living my life as I am now. Right. But I'd, I'd be a gay man. Yeah. Okay. So because I'm, I'm to... me, aren't I? So yeah. that's not going to change. No. Why would it? No. You. So I'm just trying to. I'm... Carl, all we're trying to establish is what sort of guy you go for. Okay, we've settled that. If um, sorry about that. um, if any uh, people feel sorry for Graham, sorry about that. But um, that's that settled.